All right, so I showed you Magic Lantern. You have it on your computer, you know how to access the menu yet, but now I want to take advantage of some of the cool features. So this one is going to be all about HDR photography. So let's get started. Um, so what I need to do is I need to go into this program called Photomatix Pro. You can download it and uh, I think there's a 60 or 30 day trial. It's $149, definitely worth it. Um, but uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to select load bracketed photos brings up this menu and I'm just gonna browse right to where I was which was and I'm gonna select these three guys and bring them in now here's your next question um, I'm gonna go ahead and align the source images um, if there's you think there's ghosting you might want to do that remove ghosting and definitely I like to reduce the noise on them um, at a pretty good strength let's go all the way up to 150. We'll leave that alone because there's some other programs we can use that will do better at be better at removing chromatic aberrations. But uh, so we'll go ahead and pre-process, and and here we are. Okay, so already looks kind of cool because I think it what it does is it picks up your previous preset, and I was using a preset um, that was called Painterly. But what we're interested now that we're in this program doing is um, first go through your presets. And I know it's, some people think it's cheating, but see what you like. And you should have tone mapping open here because then what you can do is you can take anything that you kind of like um, and really start to play with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll do pain, just regular painterly. Okay, and as you can see, that HDR strength is full, whereas if you go all the way down, this is just what all three look like together, and it just looks pretty bland and not very interesting. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and saturate it a little bit more and give it kind of a warmer feeling. Again, there's other programs that we can use to, uh, to uh, edit that further. Um, luminosity, this will um, bring the whole thing down oops a little bit in lightness um, so you know if you're going for like an ominous kind of looking landscape luminosity down can be cool if you want to pick up those um, reflections off of a wave or snow cover or something you might want that luminosity to be nice and high and you can see that I'm manipulating my histogram down here um, thing to know about the histogram is what you want to have is this nice big curve uh, that's what you want to kind of end with. If you've got all these these choppy little features inside your histogram, it's probably not a probably not a very well well adjusted photo um, on your part. But anyway, we'll keep the luminosity high. Uh, I like the detail contrast. Uh, let's see, right now all it's doing is adjusting the lighting a little bit. Anyway, we'll bring that down a little bit. Um, and then you can play with your lighting in here, so you can go to a more natural light setting. Which I like that better already. I'm I'm not trying to make my office look like this, um, like the Sistine Chapel. So we'll go natural there. Um, we'll try to smooth out the highlights just a little bit, so it's not so dramatic. Is obviously this is not a very dramatic looking scene anyway. Um, here's your white and black point. If you want to go, you know, get more of that outside where your whites are coming from, um, or you can bring that back down. I guess that would get more of it because that's where all your whites are coming from. Um, so that looks pretty cool. Uh, temperature, gamma, I'll leave that alone. We'll do a little micro smoothing. Just kind of smooths out the whole the whole photograph a little bit. Um, and because my saturation is at 100, I don't think these are going to do anything. And sure enough, they don't. The shadow smoothness, yeah, that adds that smooths out those dark spots spots a little bit but there's still tons of noise in here but again we got to do that later um, and so if you look at my histogram I've kind of I've got some spikes but I have brought everything sort of down because I did have a lot of light coming in and so I guess I'm going for a darker sort of look here to my photo if I wanted to add you know bring that back up I just got to basically take my white point bam now look at that I got my lights way back up but 
I don't like it because you can't see anything outside through the window. So, um, okay, I think that's about all I'm gonna do. So, all I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just process this, and it's processing all three photos again are are combined now. And so and so there it is. There's my tone mapped photo. Um, it's a bad example because it's not a cool landscape. Um, I've got some better examples of some HDR um, photos that I've done. But uh, first what we need to do is we need to take this into Photoshop. So I'm going to save as. Let's just call it, uh, you know, HDR tutorial. And it's saved as a TIFF file. So it's ready to go inside of Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm going to open my HDR tutorial TIFF file in Photoshop and bring it in. And here we go. So first thing you want to do is, is, is duplicate this layer. So I'm going to go in, click duplicate, and we'll just call it a background copy for now. This new uh, duplicated layer, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, try to remove some of this noise because you can see that I've got a pretty good deal of noise floating around up in this area here. So on this layer, let's go ahead and go filter noise, de -no uh, reduce noise. Now there's a program called Topaz Labs which has a much better uh, noise reducing software as well as some other cool perks for photography. 79 bucks. Uh, there's a few other things that are 79 bucks. They they kind of range, but um, anyway, for now I'm just going to show you how to use your your built-in uh, stuff. Um, so you can kind of play with the noise reducer, and unfortunately, it's just not doing a bunch. I've got those details set probably a little too high, so it looks like if I bring those down. Keep my strength up high, and again, it has something to do with the preset I picked. You know, that painterly does give it that uh, kind of speckled look. Um, so I can then kind of bring that sharpness down just a little bit, and okay, we'll go with that. So it's going to reduce the noise. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this into Lightroom. So anyway, I'm going to save it as, um, and we're going to go ahead and save it for, let's see, a Photoshop file, a PSD. So you can bring the, a PSD into Lightroom. Save that. Okay, so now we've got, you see this curve, we're going to try to do some things with that. First of all, let's adjust the temperature. You know, kind of get it over here. Looks like that lines things up a little bit better, but kind of like that yellow. You can adjust the tint a little bit. I kind of like that a little bit. Maybe bring the exposure down a little bit. So you could have done that earlier. Um, obviously, the later you do it, bear in mind just in general with photography, the later you make adjustments, um, the less they're going to have an impact and the higher chance you have of having some little aberrations in your photography. So um, this isn't always the best place to do it, but if there is a small fix that you can do in Lightroom, um, I recommend going for it. It's a great program. It that basically is Photoshop for photography. Um, we can take the contrast. This is, again, I apologize for the example, but I'm going to show you at the end here two really good HDR photographs. Um, that I used and one of the final techniques that I used was this brush right here it's called the adjustment brush and what you can actually do is like let's say there's a region of your photograph that you want to change um, I want to really pop out this wall let's say okay so I'm gonna click in this region and same thing as Photoshop you hit your your brackets to make this brush larger or smaller and that got way too big on me and you can start painting Okay, and you can feather it however you like, but say I want to, you know, trip it out a little bit. Okay, over here now, this whole area that has been painted um, is now adjustable by itself, separate from the rest of your photograph. 
So I find that to be pretty cool if you're trying to accomplish something. Um, you know, you can you can get in there and zoom in and um, you know really try to make make this edge a little bit better, or you can feather it and you know you don't really care if it bleeds into the other area. But um, that's a really cool thing that you can do. If you want to get rid of it, very simple. Just click on it, delete. It's gone. You're right back to your normal photo. Um, actually, my uh, uh, girlfriend did a few cool things with some photographs that we did. But um, so she did this one. This is from Palm Springs. Obviously, it's extremely overcooked. But uh, um, anyway, there's some other cool HDR uh, photographs that have that I did using this technique. Um, this one, for example, uh, just painted over these buildings just a little bit just because I wanted to really bring those colors out and I thought it looked really cool against the sky. Um, same thing with the, uh, let's see, this photo here of the mountains. Um, I wanted to get these colors. You know, it was basically just a lot of blue and white. Um, these trees are, are green normally, but I had a little bit of color right here. I wanted to just paint on that, give it a little bit of a little bit extra pop, and then and then also darken in some of these shadows a little bit. Really, you know, feature that light as it comes in through the pass here. This is in Colorado, Loveland Pass. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped. Uh, just remember, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. So you're just trying to bring out the full range of your photo uh, by using three and four different exposures all overlaid and then using Photoshop, Lightroom, and most importantly, Photomatix uh, Pro to combine them all. So thanks for watching.